The table shows the monthly revenue of a business rising exponentially since it opened an online store. Describe how the monthly revenue is growing. So when we look in this table, um, we see that they do have some months listed, but they don't have all months. And when we look here, we go from zero to three months. And so we want to look at how much this is growing by. So you can figure out the growth factor by dividing the second amount by the initial amount. And when you do this, you get that it's growing by a factor of 1.25. So 125%. And then this is every three months. So this is the three month growth. So in order to write that as monthly growth, um, we need to take that growth factor and then take it to the one third power. So a third of that time period. So then let's write an equation to represent the revenue R as a function of months M since the store opened. Um, so we've got the revenue as a function of months. And so our initial um, revenue, the first, like before it started or the initial time is 72,000. And then it's growing by a factor of 1.25. And then our exponent here, if we want it to be monthly, so it's growing 1.25 every three months. So then this will be M divided by three. So the number of months divided by three. Find the monthly revenue one month after the online store opened. So the we will take the 72,000 and then we'll multiply it by 1.25 and then to the one third since we want one one third of the growth factor or one month's worth. So then this, if you type this into your calculator, is approximately 77,000. $559.65. So then explain how we can use this value. So this is R of one, right? The revenue after one month. So explain how we can use R1 to find R4. So remember that um, we know that the growth factor for a three month period is 1.25. So from month one to month four, this is going to grow by one by a factor of 1.25. So we could just simply take this number right here and multiply it by 1.25 since we want to figure out three months later. Number two, at 7 a.m., a colony of 100 bacteria is placed on a Petri dish. Um and the population will triple every six hours. So select all statements that are true about the bacteria population. So A says when the bacteria population reaches 900, 12 hours have passed. So we initially have 100 bacteria, then it will triple or multiply by three, and every time it does this, six hours have passed. So it triples after six hours. So then this will be a tripling again after six hours. So that is going to be 12 hours. So this is true. B, three hours after the colony is placed on the Petri dish, there are 200 bacteria. So now we're at three hours instead of six hours. So this is three, out, three sixths of that tripling period or one half. So to figure this out, we would do 100 times 3 to the 1 half power, which is also the square root of 3. And when you do that, you get about 173. So that is definitely not 200. Um, and then part three or part C actually says after three hours, there's 173, which is what we figured out. Um, so part C is good. Then D says, in the first hour, the colony is placed on the Petri dish. The population grows by a factor of three to the one sixth. So this is after one hour out of the tripling period, which is six. So this would be correct, one sixth of a tripling period. So D would be correct. 
And then E says between 8 and 9 a.m., the population grows by a factor of two-thirds. So it doesn't, this one is trying to trick you that it started at 7 a.m. up here. So 7 to 9 a.m. is the two hours. But it didn't ask you from 7 to 9. It asked you from 8 to 9, which is just one hour. So this should still be one-third of a tripling period, not two-thirds. So this one is false. Number three, the graph represents the cost of medical treatment in dollars as a function of D decades since 1978. Find the cost of the treatment in dollars when D equals one. So if we look on this graph, they give us the initial cost at zero to 150. So the initial cost is $150. Then at 0.5, they say the cost is 202.50, so $202.50. And this represents um, half a decade. So 0.5 of our um, D, which is in decades. So this is half of a decade. So we want to find out what it'll be after one decade. So we know that exponential functions grow at the same rate over the same period of time. So if we look at this growth rate here from zero to a half decade, it should be the same as what we would get to go to one full decade. So let's do um, 202.5 divided by 150. And we find out that this, um, that this growth factor is 1.35. So it's growing by a factor of 1.35 or 135%. So now for the next half decade, it's going to do that same thing. So we would just need to take 202, um, 50, so $202.50 and multiply that by this growth factor. And then that would give us our cost of $273.50 about 38 cents after one decade. Number four, the exponential function f is given by f of x equals three to the x. By what factor does f increase when the exponent increases by one? So when we go to three to the x plus one, so that that exponent increases by one, whatever x is, how much does the how much does that impact the overall growth? And so you can use um, this rule. So x to the m times x to the n equals x to the m plus n. So we're able to add exponents when we're multiplying same bases. So we're actually at this stage. So we can go back to this. So three to the x plus one is really the same as three to the x times three to the first. So then this helps us calculate this, three to the first is just three. So we really have three times three to the x. So that means that this is just three times bigger than the original. Okay, so it impacts it by a factor of three. So then this next one asks us, what about when the exponent increases by two? So now we have three to the X plus two. So then this is gonna be a very similar thing. It's gonna be three to the X times three to the second. And then three to the second is just nine. So we have nine times our original three to the X. So this is increasing by a factor of nine. So then what would happen if it increases by a factor, uh, if x increases by a factor of a half? So it would stand to reason, since this was 3 squared, 3 to the first, that this is just going to be 3 to the 1 half, which you could also write as um, square root of 3. But so if I write it out like the others, it'd be 3 to the x plus 1 half, which would be 3 to the x times 3 to the 1 half. So here's your original, and here's your extra factor. So it's increasing by um, three to the half or square root three. Number five, a piece of paper has 
an area of 93.5 square inches, how many times does it need to be folded in half before the area is less than a square inch? So there's a couple different ways you could do this. Okay, you could just write out um, dividing this by two until you get to less than one. So you could do 93.5 divided by two, which is 46.5. Then you could divide by two again, which is 23.375 um, and just continue that. So this would be one fold, two folds and continue. The other way you can do this is by thinking about um, we're multiplying by a factor of a half, right? Because we're doing half the area when we fold it in half and then to some power to the number of folds. So what we're trying to figure out is when this number on bottom, because when we multiply 93.5 um, times one over two, okay, this 93.5 will be on top and the two will be on bottom, or if we're doing it twice or three times or four times, this bottom num this number will be under the 93. So we could also think about when will that bottom number be bigger than 93.5? So if we look at um, one half to the sixth power, so that's two times two, six times. Okay, that's going to be one over 64. So then this will be 93 divided by 64. So 93.5 over 64 is about one and a half square inches left. So if we look at it to the seventh, okay, so multiplying by two again, we get one over 128. So now we're going to end up with 93.5 divided by 128. So this is going to be less than one because the bottom number is bigger. So we end up with 0 0.73 here. Um, so that's going to be after seven folds. And so again, you could have kept doing this and then you would have gotten down to 1.5 after six folds and then 0.73 after seven folds to see it that way as well. Number six, the area covered by an invasive tropical plant triples every year. By what factor does the area covered by the plant increase every month? Okay, so this is yearly. So one year equals 12 months. And so we want um, one twelfth of that because we only want one month. So it's going to triple every year. So then it's going to be three to the one twelfth every month.